Yeah. Who is? Okay, we're going to call to order at 801. Okay. And we'll do roll call. Michael Hibben. Present. <laughs> Andrew Groves. Yeah. Stacy Hill. I don't see Stacy. Uh, Tom Langston. Present. Shirley McElhattan. Here. Kristen Reisinger. Here. Gary Ressler. Amanda Ross. Here. Ian Smith. Oh, here. Stephen Strutmeyer. Okay. Um, we'll just open it up for citizens' comments. Um, did you? Dale Cable was supposed to. I had talked to him earlier in the week. He was going to come. I have not heard from Dale. You've not heard from him. Not well, he's not online, and he's not here. So if he comes, we'll bring. We'll circle back to him. But okay. otherwise, we can move on. Um, we'll approve the January twenty fourth meeting minutes, which are in the packet. We've got a motion to approve. motion to approve. Second. Second. Right. Just cruising right along, and next is the commissioner report. But there's no commissioner here either. <laughs> Craig, coming. We're gonna cruise right through this meeting. Um. <laughs> Do we know if he's coming or jumping online? Hi, Stacy. Welcome. Hello. We're cruising through. We uh, we're on item four. Can the commissioner report? There's no commissioner here as of yet, so. We are um, going to move on. Okay. Next uh, item is advisory board restructuring transition planning. David, do you have, hopefully you have an update. I mean, it's very brief. Um, we've known this is coming for a long time. This is the final meeting of the sports advisory board. The commission will be um, approving and, and appointing people at their next meeting, which is Monday night, not Tuesday. Um, this and this, I'm sorry, this Monday, this coming Monday, yeah. And uh, so I've sent a couple emails to this group, uh, the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, which will be formed in part from people from this board, um, is going to meet the third Wednesday. All meetings are at 6 p.m. now, it'll be in this room unless otherwise uh, noted. Nine members with um, staggered terms, so people are rotating off on different years. Um, everything that's in the uh, OneDrive file for the Sports Advisory Board and the Parks Advisory Board will be provided to the new Parks and Rec Board. Um, there's going to be some orientation um, materials and, and um, an actual orientation provided by assistant manager Ian McMeans to kind of get each of the boys going to visit every every board to kind of get them off on the right foot, um, provide them with some materials about, you know, their purpose and Robert's rules of order and all kinds of things like that. So um, it's very well organized and rolling out. Um, very April, nicely. April will be the first, it's like the third Wednesday in April would be yes. the first meeting yep. for the new. 6 p.m. in this room. Um, so I, you probably know this, but I will be the staff liaison along with uh, Phil Holy. So we'll have somebody from Public Works and somebody from Recreation. So we should be able to complement one another in terms of dealing with the issues that arise. And do you have any sense for how, how many people have applied for the nine positions? Um, I don't have a sense, but I, other than I, I think it's an adequate number. Um, I think they'll have enough people to fill the slots and be in good shape. All right, that was short and sweet. That was the longest report so far. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to go longer. No, then, yeah, try, try to top. I'll try to top you. Um, okay, so next up is the field study update. 
since we did not meet last month, I'm trying to think where what was the last update. You had met with the various groups. Okay, okay. so I, we had met with we had met with all the youth sports board sports board representatives, and then since that time, I met with um, Brian Catan and John Grogan from the um, athletic department at the high school. And then fast forward another several weeks, we with Grogan and I met with uh, Dr. Freeze, the superintendent. So she uh, received the report also and um, has a PDF of it that she was going to share with the school board in their background materials to one of their meetings. I don't know that it was, it's not publicly shared yet, but, um, and, and that we were offered to be a part of that if she wanted support for any of that. Um, so it there, well received. yeah, it was well received. I, yes, definitely. Um, and uh, she's still, I think, learning a lot about the district and what the issues are. But um, it's interesting for her point of view, North Allegheny, where she came from, is multiple municipalities under the same school district. So if you think about their sure. field issues, mm -hmm. they certainly have more fields. But then you're dealing with not just the municipality of Mount Lebanon, or Mount Lebanon, but you're dealing with like multiple municipalities who own multiple fields and the school district. So it's, it, this seems like a very simple problem to solve. Compared to what North Allegheny is dealing with, she, when she was like, well, at least you're dealing with one municipality and one school district. Like you think we could all come together on this. And, yeah, um, good. good. So, um, and she brought up the one thing that's not really part of the report, but something to consider too. And I think we talked about this the last time is the stadium for anyone who doesn't know has some major issues underneath the home stands of the stadium is deteriorating and I think the school board approved funding to have it like surveyed and looked at no construction yet but the, to at least figure out like what's wrong and what they need to do to fix it so that's a big expenditure that they have coming down the pipe um, in similar fashion to the municipality who has this, the turf the returfing and the lighting of uh, Seymour and middle fields so as well as the hockey rink so um, everybody's kind of got some big ticket items coming up um, so that was interesting. And then on the other side of things, we met with uh, David and probably three or four people from the rec department, right, David? Mm -hmm. And Craig Grella was there as well. And then um, we got on the schedule for Monday night. We are going to be presenting the report to the uh, commissioners uh, oh, at their meeting. So they have the presentation. Do I need to send that to somebody else to get it in the packet? I'm going to be there and I'm going to... I'll put it on my surface and I'll put it up on the screen. For okay. You. Does he, do we want to put it in the packets to get them to them before? Um, I believe Keith has already done that. He's done it. Okay. Is, is anyone presenting with you? I think Tom and Ian were going to come and possibly Stacy. Or I forget. <clears throat> Stacy might have said she was not available. And I think I'll. Be... Uh, yeah, I'm. Gonna, I'm gone um, Sunday for a week. Right, that's what I thought you said. I think the three of us are going to be there. I think I'm going to present just because I've done it a couple of times. Oh, yeah, I can get through it, but they're going to, the Tom and Ian will also be there. Mm -hmm. questions you need extra. Yeah. What time is that again? Um, it's like 6.30. 6.30. I think we're like the first on the agenda. And they said we had like 45 minutes, hopefully, to present. It's been taking closer to an hour. So if they have the materials ahead of time, hopefully we can get through a little quicker than we normally do. Um, but I would say all in all, the, the rec department was happy with what they saw and the recommendations. And I think Craig thinks it's a doable idea to kind of put everybody under one roof. I, there's been really no pushback against that. I think it's about putting the business plan together of the model of it and dealing with a lot of attorneys from both sides and figuring out the structure and like exactly how it would work. But I think the concept is that everybody's on board with, I would say. Um, so that would be the first step and then working from there. What are the key proposals from, I guess? So the main, the couple of main things, one is that we would form what we were calling the Lebo Sports Partnership. So that would, the idea there is that for starters, everybody, every program that has a, uses the fields would fall under this umbrella. There would be an advisory board that kind of like this board that would have somebody from each of the various sports. The actual organization would be run by a board that has somebody from the township, someone from the school district, but there'd be a full-time employee that would be in charge of reserve, doing all the reservations and stuff for all the fields. So instead of having two separate places to go, it would all be under one roof. And basically like the school district would do one permit to this organization 
the municipality would do one to the organization and then they would just split from there. And then maybe once or twice a year, they would meet with anybody, any sports. So like you could add in swimming and hockey and wrestling and the basketball and the people that use other amenities just to have kind of a, a round table of all these youth organizations, primarily focused on youth. But I think there's also a place for the racket center concept and, and kind of some working with um, all these different groups that are basically nonprofit groups trying to support some kind of support. And sports services. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So we're, but we're, the idea is we start with the, with the fields and if that works, then you move on to like gyms or to something else. So that's the main one. And then that board would also help just like this one does uh, recommend um, projects for the school district and the municipality to do to improve the fields. In terms of what was recommended, there was a wide variety of things, lighting, turfing, um, some extra amenities here and there. Um, and then the main thing was that to really solve the problem of the shortage of fields is to develop McNeely Park. That's the only way to actually add any fields. You can add lights, you can turf, but that's not really giving you, the lights is giving you more hours, but to get any new fields and any real um, additional hours to sort of what they're, to, to increase the size of the pie, if you will, is to actually add fields. And that's really the main place where there's a place to do that. So um, the idea is to work with uh, the different sports organizations and the community foundation and kind of do some private fundraising for that to support the municipality and the school district's efforts to deal with some of these projects. A very small aspect, but it would give a one person the ability to be a field czar to close fields and climate weather and you basically shut down due to the damage, you know, the damage happens. Yeah. So, yeah, there'd be a, just kind of a one person that would know really what's going on with the condition of the fields. Maintenance would still fall under, but they would have really good contact with the maintenance at the right field and know who to call and what to do for what needs to be done and what that's things need to be shut important. down. Yeah. That's so that's the, that's the main, the main just coming out of it. And then, and, and because of that too, part, with the board restructuring, the idea is instead of for the sports board right now, it's a lot of the groups that represent like a lot of us sitting here are field sports so instead of that we would we, we could roll up into one person could represent field sports and then the other positions on the parks and rec board could be tennis and, or i guess actually racket stuff golf hockey the other amenities and that's what we had talked about at the last meeting i think to like focus on having a representative for the amenities so some for the golf course the racket center pool the ice rink those are the people how to organize it versus like now it's very sports focused. So that it's kind of a shift in the way things. And and people that have come up to me that are saying they're disappointed that the board, this board is becoming defunct. I try to explain that that's not really happening. We're trying to kind of reestablish it in a different way. It'll be what we kind of want to do. Was that? <laughs> more than, it was been more than one person. You're not kidding, are you? No, I mean, yeah, it's been a handful. More. A handful of people, because I think they just see that it's good. It's good. They think, and then they think there's no representation for sports board. I don't think they That's understand that year. Yeah, rolling it's into year. another board or that we're going to establish a whole other organization yeah. to kind of deal with it. I, I do think it, the idea of having a board where you have all these people under one roof to talk about. There's so many things that we can do together to like make all of our organizations better, and um, and you know from work, you know, accounting, taxes, insurance, storage clearances, a clearance portal. Um, there's just a, a lot of different areas where we could work together to um, come up with sort of a, a gold standard for how to do those things. Software, I mean, just in the discussions we had in, in the group, um, I know Leo Leo from uh, Softball uses a whole different software setup to sort of set up his organization and share that with us. Three or four people are like, oh, we need that to help our, our organization. So all those conversations that have happened, it continue to happen and build off of. Yeah, the one thing too, I don't know if we mentioned, but like the code of conduct and safe sport could be added to that as well, community wide. Mm -hmm. It's a big challenge. Yeah. Is each, um, so like US lacrosse has one, US soccer, US hockey, are they all pretty much the same? Their code of conduct? Yeah. 
So safe. So like if we're going safe sport is kind of the governing body, and then they have under safe sport, they'll have like um, what would be the way, right word? They would have modules that are specific to female sports or male sports or swimming or whatever it would be. So the general rule governing body of safe sport is at the top level and then underneath of it are all the other, but the clearances and the processing would be, would be one. Beautiful. So if you did baseball in the fall and right. soccer in the spring, your clearances would carry over. And then from a safe sports standpoint, that's what you look at. And like a lot of the liabilities and insurance, some of the insurance policies have changed in terms of what associations have to have, but they don't, so they're exposed. Um, the, the bigger part of that would be if there's a safe sport violation, you could go to a committee versus going to, and I think that's one of the things we've not, I don't think we've had any major issues in, in this township, but adjoining townships where, you know, the president is friends with the coach, it's an accusation made against the coach, the president believes he resolved it with the coach, but doesn't properly investigate it. Those are the types of things that can really unravel pretty quick. So at that level, if you had, you know, safe sport in a code of conduct as part of one with a representative group. And, and my question, I guess, is with the representative group, with the various sports and the various national associations they're affiliated with, is that all going to be encompassing? I, I, I don't think there's one one solution. And unfortunately, the, like Pennsylvania has their three requirements Correct. that you have to do that to work with kids in the state of Pennsylvania. The safe sport, I think, is being pushed by the insurance company. So to get your insurance, they're forcing you to do some sort of safe sport thing. And then if you're part of a larger association like lacrosse with, with and hockey and yeah. soccer, then they have their own requirements. So you still have to hit all those buckets. The nice thing about this, if we had some sort of clearance portal is at least the state part, yes. you could funnel and have keep track for all, and we could all share the same because it's the same people coaching. You don't have to keep asking because it's getting more and more challenging for these parent volunteer coaches mm -hmm. to do all of this training. It's, it's onerous. I mean, the lacrosse one this year, they do the three plus the bronze level yes. for the, on the boys' side. Um, and luckily, we don't have the safe sport part of it Correct. because it's a, just one more thing for them to do. Not that I'm against safe sport. But, but. I think, like, I, I just wish all of these national organizations would come together, too. Yeah. Right? They they all are, we, are, 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 are we all trying to protect yeah. them from some the same thing? They all get... They all charge for it. Yeah. Right. They all get their sixty dollars. So they all protect them. And like the lacrosse, the bronze training, there is a, a that's limited the amount side, of right? the side. There is a Tier limited amount first. of lacrosse specific yeah. stuff, but a lot of it is kids it's safety the same, stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah, but everybody's right. got between Whatever. the insurance companies, your national organization, and the state, you've got many buckets to fill. So and that's the challenge for everyone. So how do you? Try to keep, sort of simplify at least part of that. Okay. So yeah. that that would be one of the hopes that we could come up with a way to do that. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, but there's there's just so many opportunities for for that um, a good dialogue there between the organizations to improve. Because again, it's it's volunteers. Everyone's got a lot of the same issues. Turnover. Um, dealing with that. So, all right. That's all I have on that. I mean, anybody have any other questions? We're gonna be out of here by like 8.30. New business. So I've got two quick things. One is I wanted to confirm that softball has instituted a $10 per player fee for registration that's going to be exclusively used for field maintenance and field improvement. Okay. So we had Which talked about group? Uh, fast pitch. So, and that's been uh, in slow pitch, so the, the rec, I mean, the MT, my Lebanon Girls Softball Association, put it in. So it's 10, it was a $10 optional per person. And I don't know the total number, but that funding is going to be used towards field improvements and equipment improvements for fields. And the whole idea is eventually it'll transition to it, just a part of the registration. So they wanted to kind of tiptoe into it. But moving forward, that'll be a part of the registration to help offset field expense and field maintenance. Okay. And that may be something that some of the other organizations, I know soccer has done this, where you you collect enough funds over the years that you start a fund with the community foundation, multiple organizations have that, and they set it aside for capital projects or larger projects. Oh, as a cap. Uh, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. And I yes. think a couple, I know soccer does, 
and I think a couple other ones do. So that's part of the work check because I did meet with this, some couple people from the community foundation about this as well. How do we, you know, do we set up one fund? Some of these speed together, they all work together in different ways, but um, to use that them as the vessel for some of the private right. fundraising. So the school district has been receptive in this initial conversation about matching dollars spent. So bringing dollars to the table and matching dollars for improvements is something that they're they're interested in participating okay. in. So it's, when I talked to you on the phone the other day, I was trying to remember, I forgot one of the capital things we had. I talked with the guys at softball about previously, but the, the school has not been receptive. Is um, And this plays into um, field maintenance and Jeff Kaiser and those guys have done a lot of great things every couple of years. They're refurbishing fields and doing a great job, but the limitation from the association, the volunteer level is, at, especially at the school fields, there's no storage of proper uh, field implements and things that, that the volunteers can use right. to maintain the fields. Um, and so that was the proposal I, uh, I put for the school district and I haven't gotten anywhere with them, but that's like what mo that money could be used for. Right. So you're meaning like a locker that you would store like yeah, the, a rake or the extra initial dirt or whatever. Uh, was like smaller, uh, like a, I can't remember, it was three by five or four by six, um, just small utility shed. Yeah. Yeah. That would replace the, uh, the job those boxes. job boxes that are all rusted out. Because you can't put, you could throw some equipment in there, but you can't put a rake, you can't put shovels, you can't put yeah. anything like that, so. yeah. Because uh, they're doing all the work on the field, and then you got to bring your own show the rake. Yeah. Just that. Or, you, or they, we leave them at the fields, and the kids play with them at uh, recess. Well, it's a, or, so it's and, safe, and then it's a public service thing, too, about having kids not as cute as it is to go dig in the dirt when it's your siblings playing on the field next to it or whatever. They don't realize the havoc they're causing in the game. When the game comes next, and there's a hole between. Well, yes. Yeah, if you have a base. if you have a shovel and a rake and other you, things at the field, you can fix it. You can have do other, damage. You have dirt, you can yeah. fix it. Yeah. 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 Fix My it. point is, there's you can't do that. Yeah. And they're putting money into fields that uh, that you can't maintain. So. Yeah. And the the last one, David. I don't know if there was, was an update. We talked about last time, but there's an update on the sign. Yeah, Phil um, Lavolio <clears throat> gave me an update um, about four weeks ago. Um, at that time, he had uh, put together an RFP for signage. He was running at Pass Kalano, the consultant, for uh, just a final um, input, and then he was going to issue that. So I believe it is it is out to bid right now, but um, that's the last update I had. And then the other thing I'll just bring up briefly, because Dale Cable's not here. I had talked to him earlier in the week about um, the, or I guess that was last week. Um, there's a movement, or he's part of a movement to name the um, studio. Oh, thank you. The studio rink at the ice rink after mm -hmm. Frank Gill, who passed away. Oh, that's great. Recently, that's great. and Frank was was very highly involved yes. in the Hornets organization, yes. and. Uh, so there's kind of a, a movement to do that. And um, I put him in touch with Tom because Tom had talked about there's also something similar with Middlefield. Um, and then I also told him to talk to you because there's definitely a way to go about doing that and things that have to happen to do it. And I thought if they're going to, if there's to do it together simultaneously, work together to, to, to do that, if that's something that people want to do, um, you might as well learn about and go through the process together. So. We were talking with somebody, um, his name escapes me right now, but close to the family about naming something or, you know, some memorial at the rink. Um, he has the naming policy. Um, he's, we've had just a few emails back and forth, um, but they weren't. First, they wanted to meet and then they said they weren't quite ready. So um, that's, we're in discussions with them and we'll, we'll sit down with them at some point in the future. Yeah. I'm not saying too sorry, but the school district uh, did reach out and say, hey, what's the status with the signs for our fields too? So, I mean, I think once the, once the, they're on board with all the, the identification, all of all the school district fields as well. So they're, 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 they're basically waiving any process to approve it. You said once, once you have a design, 
give us an option and they would do the same. Okay. That would be good for, for the fields. For the school fields as well, yeah. yeah. So I think what Dale was looking at in coming was just a kind of a, a stamp of approval from the board, from this board, even though I told, explained that it was going to be defunct after tonight. Um, <laughs> 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 we take a vote. Yeah. And I said, I said, basically, I mean, <laughs> sure, we're in support of it, but I don't know what that really is going to do in terms of the process. It's not really what they're it's not part of the process, but we can certainly say that we agree with the consensus is we are, think that's a great idea, but, um, and I think the same was true for when the, the idea was brought up with Middlefield, that uh, people I would rather have it be named after somebody in the community than just be called Middlefield <laughs> or the Studio Ice. <laughs> Both could be improved, right? Middlefield's going to be named they after have to the naming rights to the wrong Was it the softball dad? Our clarity. Yes, thank and you. Naming of the wrong yeah. time. The rock pile is another one, right? I'm one. You want would you say that again? I want to buy the naming rights to it and name it the rock pile. And name it the rock pile. That can happen. I remember I'm when our kids played it. on the rock pile, pile but they literally had rocks. Field nonsense. Uh, the rock gets the nice rock pile. I, I just read about something going on like in Blackhawk over in Beaver County where somebody did what you just said to keep to call the, the football stadium like Blackhawk Stadium or something like that. Yeah, I know that. And now uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't know all the information, but I just read something online. And now somebody, they were trying to um, supplant that to name it after somebody who was a coach or something. Like that. I said, whatever. I but <laughs> you know, the thing, like ah, this, so this person who <laughs> just wants it to be Blackhawk, you know, yeah. it would be the highest bidder no oh, matter yeah. what. Yeah, perfect. But perfect. that's not how they're. The, <laughs> Look at it. Right, <laughs> To say it's not as easy as we like this guy, let's uh, put it put it on the uh, board. But yeah, yeah. I think on that. You're that, looking at me like I'm hitting. I was, I was, I was like, like, I don't think it's really on how much you said. Yeah. And, and I think you know, and David don't comment. The the process is online. You can look at it. It's extremely detailed. Um, it, you know, there's there's a whole there's a whole step by step from from a naming aspect of it. And I and I, right. and I talked to him about that. I mean, there's a very yeah, there's a there's a very deep not for the school district. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's cool. yeah. School district doesn't have any naming rights. I'm sure they don't need to switch. Just the monetary gift, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that you that they, I'm sure they have a process somewhere for it. So, so I was going to tell Shirley for the longest time the rock pile on Google was called Wildcat Field. And I really? so, yes, yes, the rock really? pile. Yes, oh, yes, the field <laughs> No, and I kept, people had trouble. I kept that. suggesting over and over. I'm like, you do not. And this is incorrect. Yeah. Incorrect. Yeah. So when you brought it up again, I thought I'd go back. Yeah. Well, yeah. you yeah. must have a lot of influence it with Google because it's now the rock pile. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm not so written like. <laughs> it doesn't say um, upper practice field. Will no, play? it says rock pile well, sports field. Mary did. Mary did. I don't remember. I'm, I'm I mean, impressed. And still, no, actually, no, the old one. I never played soccer it. on that old field. But when before they redid the school. School. It was the rock pile for a very long time. Before they redid the I mean, it was called the, the rock pile. pile. And then they redid the school. Before. Yeah. Maddie, was, Maddie played soccer in there. Yes. When they redid the high school, it was literally a pile of things for a long time. And then they're teachers from like But it literally was the rock pile. Yeah. Well, Will Play was the time. Because it was so rocky. And they did play soccer up there because my oldest played there. It was. All right. Well, okay, we digress. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, <laughs> exactly. That was for, that's for the saloon. Yes. That's for the saloon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, if there is there any other new business? Just one quick new business. In okay. January, I was updating you on the status of the tennis center and how we had an RFP yeah. out for operations. We expected a proposal from Indoor, which we got. Um, but since that time, Indoor has withdrawn their proposal. Um, ultimate, not no, no, nothing, no big deal. But. Um, they just ultimately decided it would be best for the municipality to run it. So that's what we're doing. Um, you probably have noticed we have an ad out for a full-time racket center manager. That's been out for a few weeks now. Um, we're about ready to start interviewing candidates. We already hired our full-time maintenance guy who's been over there taking advantage of the nice weather. Um, I think the tennis center is, is gonna be the nicest it's ever looked. Um, he's really, 
passionate about the tennis center. I mean, he 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 really loves it and he's working hard. So um, he local? he's been working for indoor part time oh, for okay. years. He, yeah. He's so he local. He's he's close, but not. Yeah, he but doesn't you know, live he's inside the bubble. <laughs> he's new to the uh, so what you're saying is it, it, the indoor people used to run indoor. So now the municipality is going to run both outdoor and indoor. It's going to be one entity. It's, gonna be one entity. Yeah. it's not going to be outdoor and indoor. But it's not really an entity. It's just the municipality. It's right. not its own separate. It, it'll be a municipal run operation 12 okay. months out of the year. So um, yeah, all indoors assets will transfer to the municipality. Okay. Um, and we will, well, I mean, I don't think people will notice a huge change. It, it, certainly not initially. I mean, we we expect to um, have indoors client list and offer their subscriber time just as they had, you know, give them first right of refusal um, going into next season. Um, ultimately, we hope a lot of things will change. You know, we hope to make it more of a racket center, more programming, more just a revitalized, vibrant tennis center. Um, all the things that um, I think indoor, the municipality and, and the tennis community in general would like to see. Um, so we're working hard on that and we're excited. What's so, happening with the pro shop? Um, the pro shop initially, um, we, we probably won't open May 1st with the pro shop. It's kind of, it's a, it's, it's important, but it's a lower priority. We want to get our personnel and get the place up and running. Um, and I personally would like to hire this tennis professional so that we can collaborate and, and get their opinions on things too. I don't want to, you know, it is kind of like the pickleball thing as well. We don't want to make uh, big decisions till we get our tennis person on board and collaborate with them as well as get our uh, main park master plan completed and, and those kinds of things. So any, so the person that you're trying to hire to run this is going to take care of all the administrative stuff. The rec department will not have to deal with most of it. They will mostly be the new well, manager. This will be another division like it currently is in the okay. rec department only. Now it's going to be a 12 month operation. So this um, so divisional this manager will report to me. Okay. Um, so you know, I intend to be involved um, right. just as I am in every other aspect of our operations. But, you know, I expect this person will know more about tennis than I do. Sure. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we want to lean heavy on their right. role. It is... Uh, but it's uh, not taking more resources because you're taking more... Well... Because you're higher. You're, I'm just saying, is the higher going to balance out the increase in what I resources? I hope that... Um, the synergy of having a full-time person will equal a net gain in terms of capacity. Right. Um, instead of indoor half the year, Mount Lebanon half the year, I have a part-time person, they have a part-time person. I think one full-time person will be able to accomplish more than one than or two, two, two part-time people. Okay. Um, and just having that uh, continuity throughout 12 months of the year, I think will help. Having a full-time maintenance person is going to be huge. Um, you know, that person can uh, assume, I think, some additional responsibilities in terms of management. They're, they're certainly going to be the oversee all the part-time ma uh, maintenance folks. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they can sort of help with overall operations as well, where this part-time person won't be distracted with maintenance-related things. That should be kind of taken care of itself. Okay. Um, so I do think it'll be a net gain gain in terms of capacity. Um, whether and this will be an operations focused position, they will oversee um, instruction as well. Certainly, initially, um, but we will need to make a decision on how we want to handle uh, we want a head professional, either an employee or contracted or whatever we need to kind of look at that and that's another thing we want to work with the new manager on as well when uh, you go to racket versus just tennis you could have a professional well we're always going to have part-time professionals yeah. but, but yeah but I yeah mean, there's you've got paddle pickle and tennis sure. professionals that you can yes bring in. we would like to see um definitely uh pros capable of teaching in those other disciplines as well um, I want to bring Paddle into the fold 
at the tennis center as, as opposed to coming out of the ice rink. It just makes more mm -hmm. sense they're there, yes. especially when they're going to be there over the winter, when, which is the peak season for platform tennis. Um, so it's it's exciting. I think we're going to see uh, a lot of changes for the better um, over the next Same. coming yeah. months and year. That was my other new business. That's pretty cool. We, with the still have a temporary chiller. We still don't think we'll see parts till July. Um, Tim and I are working on potential other solutions that would be <laughs> either faster or cheaper. Um, we, we did not expect to have a temp chiller into July. What was what was initially two to three weeks is now nine months. Um, that's it's it's so not what we want. Yes, so frustrating. frustrating does describe it pretty well. Um, so we're looking at other options, um, but until then, that's that's the that's the solution. We're going to get parts in July, get them installed. Is the temp chiller working just fine? It is. We had that little hiccup where <clears throat> a temporary. Yeah, temporary. Temporary. <laughs> temporary. We had to get a replacement temporary. Uh, uh -huh. But so far, since that replacement was put in place, uh, it's it's been working well. I can't remember. I'm losing track of the timeline, but. Initially, we had two temp chillers sitting there. Right. One was a right, right, gigantic right. paperweight, and uh, the other was actually running. I can't remember if I told you that we were able to get the, uh, the one was off. So, yeah. so now we're down to one temp chiller, and hopefully they're repairing that one so that if this one ever yeah, needs to back out for our back, <laughs> we can roll that one in there. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at other options. We're talking to different. Um, uh, mechanical contractors to see, you know, what we can do. Um, we'll see. I, I hope there's a better solution, you know, whether we could move straight to um, a full-scale permanent chiller replacement project. We thought initially that that was something that we would, you know, repair what we have, wait for the bond issue next year, and do all our engineering and get everything prepared and then do that in uh, you know 2025 or 2026. Um, if it's possible to go straight to that, that's something we would consider. Um, there's other options. I, I don't want to get into them all right now, but we're, we're working to find something that would get us a savings and in a better position. Into it. <laughs> All right. Any other new business or announcements? Um, no, we can't announce the next meeting. I, I, no next meeting. I don't know if this qualifies as an announcement, but um, I did just want to take a moment to thank all of you for your time and efforts. Um, you know, the Sports Advisory Board started over 12 years ago. Um, I don't know if anyone had expected it to last this long. Um, I've enjoyed working with this board over the years, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next chapter, but um, I do want to just thank you all. I'm sure I'm working with at least some of you in the, on the new board, and uh, you know, I'm sure some of you, others of you will be coming to the board with uh, Public comments or other projects. So, uh, <laughs> <see you>. <laughs> comments. <laughs> One way or another, I'm sure I'll be seeing you around. But I wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think that's it. Very anticlimactic with a couple of missing pieces here, but um, we will go ahead and adjourn right on time at eight forty. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks. Have a good thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>